Hi, we're talking about humidity measurements now. And specifically, we're going to look at different ways to make moisture measurements of our atmosphere. We're going to start out uh, with the first one, which is uh, by adding water vapor to our atmosphere. We can figure out how much water vapor is in our atmosphere. There are a lot of other different methods that we'll cover in other videos. So the first one is the addition of water vapor to the air. And um, by adding water vapor to the air, we can figure out how much water vapor is actually in the air. A method of doing this is using a psychrometer. A psychrometer, of course, is a device that uh, measures the humidity in our atmosphere. And it's made up of two thermometers, which are side by side exposed to the air. One thermometer is called a wet bulb. Uh, the wet bulb is a, uh, a thermometer that has some uh, fabric, uh, actually it's muslin, at the bottom. And that muslin around the bulb is saturated with water, specifically distilled water, because we want to make sure that that water is pure. The other thermometer has no muslin around it. We call that the dry bulb. It's basically an ordinary glass thermometer. So the uh, psychrometer um, has two thermometers, so it's measuring two temperatures. One temperature is the temperature of the atmosphere that's measured by the dry bulb. And on this graph, it's indicated by yellow. The other temperature that's measured is the wet bulb, and that's indicated by the white dot and also the uh, white line going up from TW. So what this diagram shows along one side, it shows water vapor pressure, that's the vertical axis, and along the horizontal axis is temperature. And here we see that we are starting out with a certain amount of water vapor, which is indicated by the first yellow dot uh, by or up from the yellow temperature of the atmosphere. So that's where our, our atmosphere is starting at. In other words, it's below saturation. The red line with E sub S here represents the saturation amount. As you can see, as temperature increases, the saturation amount increases. You've probably heard that uh, warm air can hold a lot more water than dry air or, or, or colder air. Colder air tends to be drier. And that's what this line represents. It shows that at higher temperatures, we can have a higher amount of water vapor pressure, which is directly proportional to the mass of water vapor in our air. And at colder temperatures, we'll have much lower water vapor pressures at saturation, uh, which is indicated by the lower values on the red line curving uh, off to the left. So uh, what we do when we use a psychrometer is we wet the wick on the wet bulb, wet the muslin, and then allow it to evaporate. And as you know, through evaporation, the temperature will decrease. It decreases because it takes energy to convert that water in the muslin wick, convert it to vapor. So the temperature, uh, the energy comes from the thermometer and also the surrounding air. So the temperature decreases, but you're adding water vapor to the air. In other words, you're adding water mass to the air. So as a result, uh, temperature decreases. So you could see the, um, the yellow arrow is moving to the left, representing a lower temperature. But you also see that it increases the amount of water vapor in the air. And that's where it moves up at an angle that's going up to a higher water vapor pressure until it finally hits that red line. That red line represents saturation and you can't evaporate any more water vapor into the air once it's saturated. So if you notice the temperature of the wet bulb is lower than the temperature of the air or the atmosphere because of evaporation. And also the amount of water vapor in the air is more than what you started with because you evaporated water into the air. Notice also that the wet bulb temperature is greater than the dew point. The dew point is another method to reach saturation. That's where you take the amount of water vapor that's in the air, 
keep it constant, and reduce the temperature until you reach saturation. In other words, you're going from the yellow dot that says T atmosphere, and then uh, going uh, perfectly horizontally uh, to the left. In other words, holding your water vapor pressure constant or the water mass in the atmosphere constant until you reach saturation where little water droplets will form on uh, all surfaces, whether it be mirrors or um, on uh, any substance actually on the, on the surface of the ground, uh, you reach the dew point. And uh, the dew point is uh, at saturation, 100% relative humidity. So um, here you can see that the amount of water vapor that's evaporated into the air uh, by the wet bulb is a function of the temperature difference between the atmospheric temperature and the wet bulb temperature. If the uh, wet bulb temperature is a lot lower, there's a bigger difference between the temperature of the atmosphere and the wet bulb temperature. It means that the air was initially drier. There was not much water vapor in the air. So this is our uh, uh, concept, physical concept of what's going on. We're looking at water vapor evaporating, or no, liquid water evaporating from the wet bulb thermometer from the muslin wick. So you're losing water mass to the atmosphere, but the energy that comes, that the energy that's required to convert that liquid water to water vapor comes from the surrounding atmosphere. So the heat that's lost by the air, and also actually some of it comes from the, act, the water itself, is what's required to vaporize that liquid water and convert it into vapor. The derivation of this equation is somewhat complex. Uh, if you want to enjoy more of that derivation or see that derivation, you could take Atmospheric Sciences 350, uh, which is atmospheric thermodynamics, and we cover that in that class. But suffice to say, here uh, is the solution for uh, this problem. Uh, this is the equation that comes from that derivation of the uh, heat balance in our atmosphere when you evaporate water to reach saturation. This equation is called the psychometric equation or the psychometric formula. And it's got a lot of variables and we'll have to step through each one and explain what each variable is. On the left hand side of this equation, we have E and that is at a particular temperature T. So what this represents is E is the vapor pressure in the air, the amount of water vapor that's in the air, and that is at the temperature T or the temperature of the atmosphere. This is what we want to know. We want to know how much water vapor is in the air, and we measure the amount of water vapor. Well, we don't measure, but we can express the amount of water vapor that's in the air as a pressure, and that is your water vapor pressure, the actual water vapor pressure at a particular temperature of our atmosphere. On the other side of the equation, right after the equal sign, is E sub S TW. And what this is saying, uh, E sub S is the saturation vapor pressure, so it's someplace along that red line, and the TW tells us where along that red line. It's at TW. So if you follow straight up from TW, the wet bulb temperature, uh, up vertically until it hits the red line, that is our saturation vapor pressure at the wet bulb temperature. The next after that comes uh, a lot of other variables. You've got P, which is the atmospheric pressure. Uh, you've got C sub P sub D, which is the specific heat um, at, uh, of dry air at a constant pressure process. So we call that the specific heat of dry air. That's a constant. 
Um, L sub V on the bottom is the latent heat of vaporization. That's also somewhat constant. And then finally, epsilon is in the bottom, a Greek letter epsilon. And that is uh, a number. It's 0.622. That's also a constant. And then finally in the parentheses is T minus TW. T is the temperature of the air. That's your dry bulb temperature. And then TW is the wet bulb temperature on your, uh, psych uh, your, sling your psychrometer. So a lot of these uh, numbers or a lot of these variables are constant. C sub P sub D is constant, L sub V is constant, and epsilon is constant. We can stick all those together and we'll call those the psychometric constant. We'll pull out P because P is the pressure of the atmosphere and that can vary depending upon whether you're at sea level or if you're at Denver, Colorado where it'd be closer to 850 millibars. So here is your psychometric equation. So you can calculate the actual amount of water vapor in the air at any particular temperature based upon the saturation amount, which is based on the wet bulb temperature, and then a multiplication of a constant times the pressure of the atmosphere times uh, the temperature minus the wet bulb temperature. In other words, we call that the, the depression. And this is what's happening. This is kind of uh, just going through one more time the graph and trying to make sure you understand the things that we measure and then how we calculate the actual vapor pressure of the atmosphere. Starting out, we me measure the temperature of the air using the dry bulb. We uh, allow the uh, wet bulb to evaporate and reach a temperature, finally bottom out at a temperature where it cannot go any lower, and that's when you have 100% relative humidity surrounding the wet bulb and you've reached saturation, which is represented, represented by a dot on the red line, and that dot is right above TW, the wet bulb temperature. Finally, you also need to measure the station pressure. So this is our method for calculating the amount of water vapor in the air. We sling the sling psychrometer, we get the temperature of the dry bulb and the temperature of the wet bulb. And then number one, using the temperature of the wet bulb, we calculate the saturation vapor pressure of the air uh, at the wet bulb temperature. And we have an equation, another equation for that. Number two, we calculate the actual vapor pressure of the air using the psychometric equation. After that, we can take the temperature of the air and figure out what it would take to saturate that at our atmospheric, uh, at our uh, temperature of the atmosphere. And then from the uh, values of the actual water vapor in the air and the saturation at that particular temperature, we can figure out the relative humidity. And then finally, if we know the actual vapor pressure of the air, we can go backwards and figure out the dew point. So let's take a look at some of these equations. So our first step was to, uh, of course, get the uh, wet bulb temperature, and then using that, calculate the saturation temperature, or saturation pressure saturation vapor pressure of the air at the wet bulb temperature. That's what you see in equation number one. Equation number two, or number two, using the psychometric equation, we uh, stick in the value that we got for the saturation vapor pressure of the air at the wet bulb, that's E sub S T W, put that in to the equation as well as the pressure of the air that we measured using a barometer. And then using our psychrometer, we have the temperature and the wet bulb. We take the difference, multiply that by the constant, and then subtract that from the saturation vapor pressure of the air at the wet bulb, and that'll give us our actual vapor pressure of the air. After that, we can do something else. We can figure out how much water vapor would it take to saturate the air 
at our normal temperature, at our air temperature. That's what this equation is. Uh, stick in the temperature of the air in uh, equation three. And from that, that'll give us our saturation vapor pressure at our air temperature. So if we take that, that should be much higher than our actual because we know that our relative humidity is usually less than 100%. If these values, the saturation vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure of the air were the same, we'd have 100% relative humidity. And that's not always the case. Usually our air is subsaturated. So if that's the case, the actual vapor pressure, E sub T, would be less than the saturation vapor pressure at our air temperature. And then finally, if we know the actual vapor pressure, we know that the actual vapor pressure of the air is, same, is the same as the saturation vapor pressure of the air at the dew point. So we can go back and solve for dew point once we know the actual vapor pressure of the air. And we can put that in and calculate the dew point. If you don't like to do calculations, and who does, you can use a psychedelic confuser. That's what they called it in Vietnam, the weatherman. But it's actually a psychometric computer, uh, which is a, a circular slide rule that's used to do these calculations. They're very hard to find these days. You might find one on eBay or someplace like that, but they're rather expensive. Or you can go out and look up in psychometric table the dry bulb, the wet bulb, and then the particular pressure, figure out the relative humidity, or the dew point temperature. So uh, what this does is it helps us figure out how much water vapor is in the air, and that's how we measure water vapor. In our next video, we'll talk about the errors with psychometric measurements.